Welcome to Get A Word In, a podcast about content marketing. I'm your host, Adam Walker. I'm passionate about sharing stories and knowledge through content, especially in the form of podcasting. In fact, I co-founded Edgewise.media, a podcast-first marketing content agency. On this show, I interview content marketers at some of the top companies in the world and discover what's working for them, what isn't, and most importantly, what's next. So stay tuned and get ready for some great content about content marketing. My guest on the show today is Michelle King from Reputation Inc. Michelle, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Well, I'm excited to talk to you because I know that your company is all about content. But before we dig into all that, why don't you just give us the quick flyover. Who are you? What are you about? What's your company about? That sort of thing. Sure. So Reputation Inc., we are a content and PR agency. So um, the reputation in the name is for PR and the Inc., which is I-N-K, is for content. Um, I was in PR most of my career and kind of saw the shift happening toward more and more content and the skills that PR people have translates so well to content and content marketing. Um, so yeah, founded the company 11 years ago yesterday. Yesterday was our 11th anniversary. Um, and we work, we work mostly with professional services firms. So law firms, architecture firms, engineering, construction, and then um, other B2B companies. So we're, we're very much so a B2B firm. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that. Well, happy uh, anniversary. Happy 11 thank years. Uh, thank you, thank 11 you. years of, of entrepreneurship and running things is uh, always just so profound and amazing. So well done. <laughs> thank you. Well done on that. Well, uh, well let's, let's dive in. Let's talk marketing content. That's what I love to talk about. And I'm always looking for insights and just new ways of thinking. So what content marketing is working well for you or for your clients right now? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's it's a mix, but certainly in the B2B space um, uh, that the helpful how to type content is uh, a staple of what we do. So um, we're often just creating the educational. I mean, I preach to my clients about, you know, what kind of content can, can we create that helps clients do their jobs better? You know, it's that sweet, that content sweet spot of um, you know, the client, uh, your expertise and your audience, your prospective clients needs information needs. So, uh, and that is often, especially at the top of the funnel, they're really just sort of trying to solve problems. Um, so it's content that solves problems that sort of places you on the radar of somebody who has the knowledge and expertise to solve those problems. And then so that when they're ready to, to find a provider like you, um, you're, you're already on their radar. So, um, we do that. We also do, you know, a lot of um, thought leadership, which is, you know, and that plays a role in helping clients, you know, sort of gain that visibility. So and that, that works well for clients that don't maybe have the kind of brand visibility that they want. So um, the other uh, sector, we're, we're starting to work more and more with tech companies in the sectors that we have expertise in. So legal, legal tech's a big one. So for those kinds of clients who maybe are a little bit new, they just don't have that credibility in the marketplace and that brand awareness. That's where, um, you know, publishing thought leadership, byline articles and trade publications really helps them uh, establish that, that credibility. I love that. So that's so important. It's so great. Um, I'm all about content that helps people. That's why I'm doing this podcast. Selfishly, I'm also doing this podcast because the content helps me. So you know, it, it's a win across the board. So, all right. So, so that's what's working. What content is not working? What are you shying away from? What are you avoiding completely? Uh, you know, it, for me, it's mostly content that is uh, one just not done well. So I see a lot of content where, um, you know, I, I talk to clients a lot about how, uh, you know, everyone, even, you know, our more sophisticated uh, B2B audiences, we all have very limited time. Um, and I know that sounds, it's been said over and over again, and it doesn't mean that content has to be short, but it has to be very obvious of what that content is and what kind of value um, a reader or a consumer of your content is going to get out of it. So that's where great writing skills and kind of having a, a laser focus understanding of 
the subject matter, but also the the audience and their sophistication with the topic or their um, knowledge level with the topic is so important because you really have that limited amount of time to get them to pay attention. So it's, uh, you know, it's just content that's done well, that's written well, that's created well. Um, and I think, I think there's a place for, uh, you know, all sorts of types of content. You know, we've dabbled in everything from uh, podcasts to lots of written content to, um, you know, video. There's, there's different ways to deliver content, but in the end, you have to really understand the audience and you have to deliver it in a way that makes them really clearly understand what it is you're trying to communicate very quickly. What struck me as you were saying that is that I, I feel like where a lot of content marketers miss the mark is in, in creating content that's easily consumable, right? So when they're writing, a lot of times they'll forget to have good headlines throughout the article so that people can scan to the section that they actually care about. Because I'll confess, I'm one of those readers where I'm just going to open up your article, scan to like one section, read Everyone a couple of bullet does. points and yeah. move along. Right. But like, but like that, but then, you know, and, and for one thing, that's why I love podcasts is they're so easy to consume because I can listen while I'm washing the dishes, which is kind of fantastic or walking the dog or whatever else. Right. And, but even with video, like I think about video and how we need to create these short segments, these moments of consumable content so that users can really integrate them and in, in sort of, you know, watch them and move on, right, with their day. Well, yeah, I don't know if you've ever read, um, it's Nielsen um, research, I think, that put out this concept called, uh, that we're informivores. So we're hunting for an information sent as we're reading. So no one sits there and reads content on the web, you know, top to bottom. They scan through trying to, you know, following that information sent to find the information that they want. And that's why there's this uh, feeling that nobody reads anymore. Nobody spends time with long content. And then Google tells us that's actually not true, that really substantive long content works. And so you can develop this long content, but you have to make it scannable so that people can can quickly go through and find the bits that they want and then and determine, is this worth my time? Because that's what we're we're constantly doing. We're constantly saying, is this worth my time? Is this what I think it is? So you have to achieve that first. And, and that's kind of what I was trying to say at that last point was if people don't, if they get there, it's not scannable or the scanning that they do tells them, no, this isn't quite what I thought it was. They're going to bounce really quickly. Mm -hmm. So yep. no, I've always loved right. that concept of informivores, um, you know, that. on that sort of information sent. Yeah. Yeah. I had not read that, but I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to go look that up right after this conversation. So, okay. Okay. That's great. So, all right. So next question, um, where are you seeing content perform the best right now for you or for your clients? Uh, industry specific content. So it goes to, and again, cause I'm in a B2B space, uh, the more niche you can get, uh, the better, um, and one way to do that is to create content that speaks to a particular industry. You know, we all operate in these sort of silos and ideas that our uh, our world is different than everyone else's, right? So uh, I, I, you know, when I decided I was going to focus on a couple of industries, I just took one industry and really kind of focused on it with our content. So, um, you know, and that's when the leads started coming in. That's when the attention happened. So. Um, I'm seeing, you know, I'm recommending that to clients if they, it, it's very, it goes back to long tail keywords versus, you know, um, your more broader keywords. It's the same kind of concept. You've got to speak directly to somebody and people think, oh, this, this person, this agency, this, whatever, you know, company really gets my industry. They get, you know, what I do. Um, I mean, there's other ways to niche down, but that's a, a very, uh, one that works really well, especially in B2B and especially in professional services. Um, so we've got law firms that are creating instead of it used to law firms were kind of this horizontally structured practice areas. But now you're seeing law firms create industry groups um, and pump out the content around those um, specific industry groups. Um, and I, I see it with, you know, our architecture clients. Um, it really it really works. Hmm. Absolutely. Wow. That's fantastic. Great, great advice. So. Last question, if you could focus on one thing for the next year, one thing only, what would you focus on? That's a real hard one because there's a lot that I want to do. Um, I know, I know. Yeah, uh, if you'd asked me a year ago, I'd have said podcast, um, but I did mm. do that for a year. Um, you, and, did. And it was, you did, Yeah, and it was incredibly successful, one of the best things I've ever done, and I'm, I'm continuing it. 
Um, but I would say over the next year, I'm going to focus on deep industry content. Um, so I'm going to um, take my own advice. I've already done that somewhat um, with law firms, and I'm going to turn to other industries um, that we have a lot of expertise and experience in. So uh, peeling off, let's say, you know, architecture and really kind of developing specific industry content and speaking directly to that. Um, the other thing we do is uh, we really just try to, as much as we can, and, and again, I know this has been talked about forever, but a lot of uh, companies still don't really practice it, is that real just uh, really, really helpful stuff, you know, the the giving away the farm a little bit, you know, we, we put out a um, monthly newsletter for two sectors where we publish all the upcoming uh, op PR opportunities, you know, this is this, ed this editorial calendar, this award, this, you know, all the things that most PR agencies used to see as intellectual capital that you can't give up. Um, but that just tells companies that need PR firms, this firm's on the, on top of everything and they know where, you know, they know of all the opportunities. So, you know, again, it goes back to if, if the client's going to DIY it, that's not the kind of client you want. So um, just really specific, uh, good checklist uh, things, you know, any kind of data that you've collected that's sitting and that you're using, uh, putting out that kind of content. So, I love that quote. If the client's going to DIY it, that's not the kind of client that you want. And that is so true. You're like, so, so true. So true. Well, Michelle, this is great. If you don't mind, uh, at the end of these conversations, I like to do a little recap of what I've learned. Uh, just kind of make sure my notes are solid here. So let me do that. And then you fill in any gaps I've gotten. And then I'll ask you if you have any final thoughts. So, Related to content marketing, what's working? You said content that helps people, that solves problems, and thought leadership to help some of your clients get additional visibility. Under what isn't working, you said essentially content that's not done well. Everybody has limited time, so content has to have obvious value. You, you mentioned that we are informivores, so we're scanning content to capture what we need. We're not really consuming the whole thing. And because of that, we need to make content scannable and that people are always asking, and I love this, people are always asking, is this worth my time? Which is so important for us to keep in mind as we create marketing content. For what, where does your content perform best? You said industry specific content, the more niche you can get, the better, and create content for a specific industry to serve that industry. And for the last question, if you could focus on one thing, what would it be? You said last year it was podcast, which is a big win because I'm all about the podcast, as you know, and I'm very excited that you've been successful with that. And for this next year, you said deep industry content. I love that. That was Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, I hesitate with clients. There's not, there's not a, I mean, there are some hard and fast rules with content, like being helpful, uh, scannability, those kind of things. But in the end, the formats really depend, it, it, it really requires a, um, I always tell, uh, my employees that marketing is a risk taking adventure, right? You have to, you have to be able to take, you have to be comfortable with taking risks because not everyone's audience is the same. Not everyone's, um, subject matter experts are the same. So you have to have that, um, uh, uh, you know, ability to try out things. So things like trying a podcast. I had someone say to me one time that she gets go ahead for a lot of her marketing projects by calling them all a pilot project, you know, to get, to get over that hump of people wanting to, you know, and I was like, that's brilliant. You know, I let's, love let's that. pilot this, but it's true. You have to, you have to attempt certain things and see how they work for you because a podcast isn't going to work unless you've got somebody that is really dedicated to it, who enjoys talking to people who does well in these kind of conversations, who can kind of keep hammering away at finding the right guests, all those kind of things. If you don't have that versus maybe somebody else who really just wants to do kind of more, uh, wants to write, doesn't ever want to have to speak to somebody. So it's, you have to be able to kind of uh, take those risks and see what works. Um, but within the broader umbrella of it's got to be targeted, it's got to be helpful, um, you know, you got to understand your audience, all of those, those kinds of rules. That's right. That's right. Well, Michelle, this is fantastic. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to join me on the show today. This has been just amazing. Same. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for listening to Get A Word In, brought to you by Edgewise.media, a podcast first marketing content agency. To learn more about Edgewise, visit www.edgewise.media. I'm your host, Adam Walker. To connect with me, check out my blog at adamjwalker.com. 
Thanks for listening and make sure to subscribe now so you don't miss our next great conversation about content marketing.